welcome everyone and today doing something a bit different we're not focusing on the match styles of things we're focusing on just getting some bites and pleasure fishing now come down to western pools just to show you how good the silverfish fishing can be at this time of year on this venue sometimes you're just going to go out and get some bites and have just a nice day's fishing as you can see the weather's nice today it's clear it's still it's not too cold so we should get some bites so let's get over to jack's pool now which we'll be fishing and get some fish caught Right, so on the peg now, it's a little bit different, this video. I'm not going to talk you through when I'm fishing. What I'm going to do is just talk you through everything you're going to need to come on these little pleasure sessions and catch some silvers in the winter. As you can see, it's pretty cold today. There's leaves are dropped, very still, very wintry feel about it. So, most important thing is when coming to these lakes is picking the area on the lake, so the location of the fishing. Now, Jack's Pool, it's quite wide at this end, so say peg 3, peg 22, peg 20, peg 17, peg 16. And in the, the middle numbers, it's quite narrow at the bottom end. Now, I'm speaking about this because what you really want to look for when you're coming on these sort of venues, whether your venues has got the same structure as this, is where to fish. Now, ideally, I want to be fishing in the, the widest water I can. So here I've got a massive bowl here. So if any silverfish fish are going to live, in this bowl nice and happy now if you go into corners or small narrow bits yes they can be good in winter but it's a bit of hit and miss and then when you're coming for these sessions say if you're only here for a few hours you don't want to be sitting there hoping they're there you want to go to an area which is consistent which is normally in the middle of the lake or the widest part this is why i've chose to sit here today on peg three it's known for a good peg in the winter for silvers so that's why i've sat in it the second thing is where to plumb up now this is a bit of a tricky one it's all about what depth you've got and whereabouts are there's no point fishing too close to yourself because the water is so clear today if i look down there now i can see three foot down easily i can see the bottom at the end of the pallet so with that in mind i've got to change where i want to fish my bait and how i want to fish my rig so i'll leave the rigs for when i go on to them but what i want to do is talk about where to fish so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put i've plumbed up at 30 meters this is because it's the deepest part of the peg. There's a big, nice area. I've spoken about this before in my past videos about trying to find a nice area. It's all the same depth, so fish can come in and out and not be worried about coming up a hump or a shelf or an island and just coming in and out of this area. And because you're going to be loose feeding a lot, that's an ideal place to catch them. Now, the depth we've got is probably five foot, five and a half foot. So you're going to be fishing on the drop style even in the winter months you can catch a few fish shallow fish like i roach and chub can come off the bottom and you can catch them that way even though the water's clay you just change your rig so this brings me on to my rigs which i've set up today i've only set up two i'm just having a little play with some jaw slip yes i've used it in the nine nine eleven thirteen sizes for my f1 fishing and i just think the nine's the best one for f1 fishing i can get but there's a two lower sizes so i like to use single five for all my silverfish fishing but with the new elastic you've got to come and give it a try you just don't know so this time from the bottom i've got this seven drawer slip so this is just on the bottom is a bit more a bit stronger so i can set that hook when i get down to the hook i'll explain it a bit more but i've got oh oh 012 acupower line now with a lot of my main lines in the summer for in the winter sorry for f1 fishing i use 050 just because it's robust and they're not going to let me down but with my silverfish fishing i like to keep everything a bit more delicate and i've used the 012 acupower it's just a nice line it's still robust it's nice and supple you can get small little shots on nice and easy don't damage the line too much 
So that's what I like to use for all my selfish fishing rigs. And I've just got a number eight back shot. Spoke about this thousands of times before. When you flick your rig in, you want it to arc over and you want your back shot to control that float. So that's why I've got that. Now, there's two sort of floats that I like to use as silvers, and that's the F1 Fine or the Chanty. Now, there's two different situations I like to use that. Like today, we've got dark water on a venue. I can see an F1 Fine, but where I'm fishing, it's slightly broken up because of the trees. Now, with an F1 Fine, I'd be able to see it, but I'd be trying really hard to see it. So, all I've done is I just like to use a Chanty, just because it's got a bit of, bit of a thicker top because it's a cane top and it's really visible so when I'm dotting it right down I can see it that's the reason why I've got that in a 4 by 14 this is just because of the depth of water if it's really still like today I'd probably get away with the 4 by 12 but I've just gone with the 4 by 14 because the fishing can be really good sometimes you want to get your bait into that area where the fish are now sliding down my rig I've just got that through a short kit as well and short number 3 just so when I lift them up the fish can net net them nice and easy and get them fish in the net now this is just down to a bulk number five number eight this is just because i want my bait straight down i don't want too many shot on there if i had number 11s i'd have probably have six to ten number 11s well the number eight's only got five on there so it's nice and neat and then going down i've got two number 11s this just creates a nice slow fall on the rig so you can get them fish where they're feeding on the drop because with silvers you're feeding with a catapult a lot you're lifting your rig out, laying it back in, that's what you want. You want a nice slow fall in the bottom half. And then finally, the last thing is I've just used an SFL size 20 straight off the rig stick onto there. So it's six inch long, nice and simple. Now, you hear me speak about fish coming off the bottom and catching them shallow. Don't get me wrong, some days they don't, but some days they really do come off the bottom. And this is why I've set this rig up. On this one, I've just gone a bit lighter. I've gone a five drawer slip, a little Dacron. It's actually the rig I used, the top kit I used the other day when I last kitted two top kits. This is the one I used. I've just got a back shot there, number eight again. Now, you hear me speak about the choice of floats. This one's a F1 fine in four by ten. I can dot this down to a pimple and make sure I can see it. Yes, I could use a Chanty, the same thing, it's just the same with the broken light. Where I'm fishing that, I can just about get away with this, but if I'm fishing on the bottom, I don't want to be guessing. With this, I'll see all my bites as the rig arcs over, and I'll be able to catch them fish on the drop. Same again, just a strung bulk. Probably three, three inches apart down there, number 11's them. The same hook as the last one, a 20 SFL, straight off the rig stick, so it just makes it nice and simple. But that's a nice setup, you're not going to bump and lose fish, but you're going to get every fish you land in. So there are a few little rigs I've set up today. Now you're going to probably ask bait. Now, all I've done today is brought some maggots. Don't get me wrong, you can catch fish on casters, pinkies, ground bait. But I'm going to touch on ground bait in a second. But maggots, just with a quick session, I've literally got a pint from the shop. £2.50, straight in my bucket, well my tub, and I'm fishing straight away. It's nice, cheap, if you had an afternoon spade, just come down. So I've got some nice red maggots there. Now I'm going to touch on how, how you're feeding. What I like to do is I like to feed either loose feed or with some ground bait. Now, if there's a lot of skimmers in here, say 10 ounces, 8 ounces to a pound, 2 pound, I'd look to feed some ground bait. But there is some skimmers in here, but there's not a massive head of them where I'm going to catch a massive volume, say 20, 30 pound of them. So I don't really want to target just that because if I feed some ground bait I'm going to put off fish like eye, chub, even the odd roach if I put some fish meal ground bait in so I'm reducing the chances of that. So what I've done is I've just kinder potted a few maggots in probably 50 and I've just loose fed over the top. This is because I want to draw fish in all the time and fish like eye, chub and roach all follow your bait down. They all watch it for the water with it being so clear I find that's the best way to catch them. So I'm going to get some fishing done now but I hope them little tricks and tips and nice little way of setting up your rigs can get you a few more bites on your pleasure sessions this winter if you haven't been down to western before i'd highly recommend coming on one of these lakes if you just fancy a few bites in the winter months it can get bitterly cold them carp stop feeding but you can still catch a lot of fish 
on these commercials. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. It helps with everything. You're not going to miss any future videos and stuff like that. Big thanks to everyone that has already, everyone that watches, and I'll see you on the bank soon. Cheers. Sounds